G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Wednesday evening here in Australia. Uh, sorry for the late one, but you know, my general Monday 9 to 5 got in the way. And look, Bitcoin, it just seems like it's hovering around this kind of mid-50s range and it'll fluctuate up to sort of 60 and then it'll drop back down. There's really just a lot of kind of market pressure people are really really happy to sell around that 60k mark and people are really really happy to buy at about that kind of $54,000 level so really what we're waiting to see is who's going to you know have the endurance are the sellers going to have more endurance because there's not a whole lot of people selling at 55 there is some but not a whole lot but definitely when Bitcoin gets into that 60k bracket I mean, there's just sell-off straight away. And there's some market manipulation going on as well. All the longs getting, you know, absolutely crushed. And I think that's going to continue for a while. You know, there's people out there that'll tell you, you know, leverage trading is a really good way to make coin. And look, I know people that do make coin leverage trading, and that's great. But I know they lose a lot in leverage trading as well. But they don't lose as much if they do it smart and they set their stop losses. And look, a lot of people don't though because they, they're worried that they're going to get, you know, kind of wicked out and then it's going to shoot back up. And that's where they get unstuck when they don't set stop losses. So for me, I stay away from that stuff and I just simply invest because I know given enough time, no matter when I put my money in, it could be even the peak of this cycle. Four years time. I'll have made that money back and some. That's my experience. So for me, I think we're just going to probably bounce around here for quite some time. We could go lower. We could go higher. No one really knows. And I know some people get really frustrated and they're like, oh, you know, just come out and make a statement. Well, my statement is I don't know what's going to happen at the moment. I think in the sort of midterm, we definitely go a lot higher. But we could go lower before we go higher. I just I really don't know. The market is all over the place. We had such low volatility for a while. And now the volatility is just really gained. So yeah, fact is I don't know exactly where it's going. And again, no one ever really knows. But yeah, let's move on. Let's have a look. Still above $2 trillion. So that's really, really good. BTC dominance, again, back under 50%. It was over, now it's 49. Ethereum dominance, 12.6. And gas just hovering around that $100, not $100, sorry, 100 guay mark. And it's been there for quite some time. Goes higher, goes lower, but pretty much, you know, 100 is kind of the average, 108, 110, thereabouts. All right, looks like a, a bit of a bloodbath here at the moment, both seven days, 24 hours and one hour. But, you know, there's some green in there. So what's really pumped? Has anything done really well over the last 24 hours? We have Pancake Swaps done well, Horizon Waves, Binance Coin, Faye Protocol, never really heard of that, Elrond, uh, Monero, Sirecoin, KuCoin, Huobi, Chili. So there's definitely some coins that have done pretty good. Now look, f for me, again, it's that 15 you know, percent, whether it's going up or down. 15% up is a really, really good gain. And a 15% loss in 24 hours, you know, that kind of hurts a little bit. But anything sort of, you know, under those marks is, you know, not so bad. But again, you know, you take a gain over a loss any single day. But look, some pretty good gains there. Not too bad. But again, we saw a lot of red before. So I reckon the reds are probably going to be a little bit sort of steeper. So let's have a look. What hasn't done so well in the last 24 hours? Right, Dogecoin. Look, it was always going to get hit. But that's not to say Dogecoin is done for and it can't still go up a long way later. But it's been doing this. It goes through cycles. It has these big pumps and then it's going to die off for a little while and it's going to get to a flat point and just sit there for a while and everyone will forget about it. And then Doge will just get on another run and then everyone jumps in and they get burnt. So look, I'm not saying don't buy Dogecoin. If you want to go out there and buy it, then sweet, go ahead and buy it. But just wait for it to bottom out wait for it to flatten out and not be so volatile once something flattens out it tells you that there's good support there and so it's less likely not impossible but it's less likely to dump even further after that unless there's some kind of big downturn in the market and then everything gets affected no matter what but wait for a bottoming pattern pattern i mean this is like up and down and up and down and it's really just crazy at the moment you want to see it flatten out you know even this is uh pretty crazy although it's you know it's finished a little bit higher than where it sort of started for the seven days and you can see 24 percent. but look only one really big kind of you know what I would call a reasonable size loss. 
nine percent's not so bad, and particularly if you're still up nine percent, so you've lost half of those sort of gains. But again, it only really hurts if you bought at the top. And if you bought at the top, this is not financial advice. I can't give you any of that. But my personal advice is just hold them. Generally, if you hold long enough, you will make your money back. But you just need to remember it could take a really, really long time. And then again, maybe there's other kind of news out there that that project's actually dead and you need to get out. So you've got to try and work all that out. Is this just a downturn? If it's a downturn, then you know my personal advice, not financial advice, is hold. You know, it might take a couple of weeks, couple of months, couple of years, but eventually you're probably going to be back in profit. If it's because the project's got some really bad news going on, it's literally, you know, there's hacks and all sorts of stuff, then maybe it's a good idea to get out. But again, even that, you know, we saw all this XRP stuff. XRP is still hanging in there and, you know, it's got SEC and all of that going on. So really, you need to make your own mind up. But the losses aren't too bad, but there are substantially a lot more of them. There's definitely a lot more losses than there is gains. But they're not that high. It's not like there were major losses. They were just, you know, reasonable retracements to be expected. All right, moving on. Bitcoin. Here we go. So we are still below that 50-day moving average. So again, we're we're getting, you know, closest to this 100-day moving average. I really think if Bitcoin gets down to this 100-day moving average, it's going to be a good buy. But at the moment, it's really struggling to get under 54,000. It's got some pretty good support there. But if it loses that 54,000, I definitely think sort of around the 48, 47,000. Look, we've had, a, you know, quite a bit of support uh, back here before. So that's where I think it'll probably get bought up. But again, that's not to say it can't go lower. And we've spoke about it. 200-day moving average, I mean, people would lose their mind if Bitcoin got down to 34,000. They'd be freaking out and telling you it's over and it's done for and, look, it could be. Maybe this time is different. But in other bull runs, it's come down and bounced off the 200-day moving average at least two or three times in a bull run. So far, we've only done it once in this bull run. So, again, things are different at this point, but they're not that different. All right, some pretty good stories. So We Network, so office sharing provider, WeWork, sorry, not We Network, WeWork, said Tuesday it's accepting some kinds of cryptocurrencies as a form of payment. So they're a pretty big business, uh, and look, more and more places are starting to do this. In its announcement, WeWork said Coinbase uh, will be its first member company to use cryptocurrency as payment for its membership. WeWork said it will hold the currency on its balance sheet and pay landlords and third-party partners in currency, uh, cryptocurrencies using Coinbase. So that's interesting that they're going to pay people. I thought they would, you know, be accepting it more than paying out. But you know, look, whatever. I mean, I think it's more going to be this USDC that they'll be, you know, paying people in rather than uh, the other coins. But they said the firm uh, said it's accepting Bitcoin, Ethereum, USDC, Paxos Standard. Uh, which is basically a stable coin as well, and several other cryptocurrencies as a form of payment through BitPay. So I can definitely understand why big companies would want to accept cryptocurrency as payment. Uh, I'm not so sure about paying people in cryptocurrencies. USDC, Paxos Standard, yeah, absolutely. I can understand that, but geez, I wouldn't, you know, well, not I wouldn't, I guess. I would definitely spend my Ethereum and Bitcoin dependent on the price. Like, you know, if Bitcoin gets to, Three hundred thousand, you know, dollars per Bitcoin in the not too distant future. I'd be happy to spend some Bitcoin on some stuff, but just at the current prices, I'd rather buy and just hold. That's me though. All right, Binance US. This is a big one. So Brooksy, me mate Brooksy, he's back. So Binance hires former bank regulator Brian Brooks as CEO uh, of Binance US. So he's coming in to take over Binance US, not Binance completely. Because CZ does that, but Binance US. So Brian Brooks, the former Coinbase executive who helmed the office of the Comptroller of the Currency under President uh, US Donald Trump, will become the CEO of Binance US. After stepping down from the public sector on January 14th, not that too long ago, crypto observers have been watching closely uh, for where Brooks would land. And I was definitely one of them. I loved what he did uh, as the Office of Comptroller. I was really upset. Uh, when I found out that, you know, he wouldn't be able to hold that and Biden, you know, wanted to bring someone else in. But, you know, hopefully Gary Gensler does a really good job and it does seem like he's sort of crypto uh, friendly as well. 
And yeah, it's good to see that he, I guess he's kind of landed on his feet because Binance US is pretty big and you know he's a, he knows the whole regulation space and banking uh, and I think he will be a great asset to Binance US and you know keeping them uh, steered in the right direction and making sure they don't get into any trouble with regulations and things like that. So congratulations to both Binance and Brian Brooks and I'm really glad that you know he's got that gig. I would have loved him to stay as the officer of the comptroller and you know uh, in politics when it comes to crypto regulation and that but hey look maybe in the future uh, we'll see him back in a role like that but congratulations and well done. Right Uniswap so we've been hanging out for V3 looks like it's getting close. So the world's leading DEX has taken a big step towards launching its third-party iteration by deploying its contracts for all four of Ethereum's testnets. So leading decentralized exchange Uniswap has taken a step closer to launching its highly anticipated V3 iteration, announcing the successful deployment of V3 smart contracts to all of Ethereum's networks. Now, according to the official announcement, Uniswap V3 is expected to launch uh, to its mainnet on May 5. That's not too far away. That's literally only a couple of weeks, like sort of two, a little bit more than two, but about sort of three weeks. So, you know, I think V3 is going to be really big for Uniswap. I think, you know, the whole layer two solution and bringing down the fees and all that is going to really send Uni, uh, you know, up a whole nother level. And I am strongly considering getting some uni now that I know this is coming. But yeah, I probably missed, you know, that dip. I bought some other stuff that kind of got smacked around. But look, a lot of stuff has been smacked around. So that's the way it goes. All right. Institutional investors have rallied around XRP and other altcoins in this past week with nerdy with nearly sorry nerdy <laughs> with nearly 33 million being injected into XRP investment products. Now, not only was uh, 33 put into um, XRP, but the report describes the week as the most bullish for institutional crypto products since early March with $233 million injected in institutional funds. So they're buying the dip. So we've got all these people that are getting shaken out and they can't handle Bitcoin being at, you know, 54 one day and then 52 the next. And again, it's it's all the longs and stuff, you know, people trying to long it and short it. They're just getting wrecked. Investing is so much easier. Yeah, you're going to get a bit, you know, shaken, particularly if you bought Bitcoin at 64 and then all of a sudden it's down to 52, 54. But eventually it's all going to slow down and the price, you know, Again, I can't offer you financial advice, but it's most likely going to go up. You just got to wait. You know, people come to crypto with this false illusion that you just chuck a couple of dollars in and, you know, a couple of weeks later or a couple of months later, you're a millionaire. I can tell you right now, it does not work like that. On, well, on very, very rare occasions, there might be people that get lucky enough to do that. But most of the time, you've got to invest and you've got to hold for months to a year or more. And, you know, the really big money again, is investing and holding for years and years. You know, like you buy Bitcoin when it was 100 bucks and now it's 60,000 and you never sold any. And, you know, maybe you bought 10 or 100 or whatever, then you're laughing right now. Same thing with Ethereum. When it first came out, I think it was cents to the dollar. And imagine you had a couple of thousand or even a couple of hundred thousand Ethereum and you've held to till now and it's, you know, 2,000 something dollars. That's where the big gains are made. You buy and you hold. It's not all that different to the traditional stock market. Just the ups are a whole lot more, but also the downs are a whole lot more. So that's what you need to remember. All right, Time Magazine. So we spoke about them and they're going to accept cryptocurrency payments. So people subscribing to the Time, if they want to pay in crypto, Time's happy to do that. But it seems Time Magazine may be getting into the NFT space as well. So Time recently said it would start accepting payment in crypto. We spoke about that. Now there are glimmers of NFT tied subscriptions down the line. Time is exploring potential NFT projects around subscriptions and memberships. I mean, again, this is, you know, Time, it's such a big institution, been around for so long, and even they're heading towards crypto. If there's anyone out there telling you crypto is not going to make it and it's going to be this and it's going to be that and it's going to get hammered, it's going to be banned and blah, blah, blah. I mean, that is literally FUD. That is the definition of FUD. And that there's, you know, there's a reason that people use FUD. Well, 
that's the that is exactly it they use fud they you know big people and big companies will come out and tell you this is going down and you know blah blah it's going to get regulated and behind the scenes they're buying the crap out of it because they're keeping the price you know low and then you know once they've built the position that they want then they're going to be singing its praises saying this is the best thing ever and this is going to revolution revolu- you know revolution revolutionize you know the world because they've already got their bags full now and they're happy for you to come and buy their bags that is literally the way it works and it always has and i don't know if that will ever change but also if it's not you know them actually using fud then they're fudding it because they simply don't understand it and people are scared of change people have been using you know our dollar system and you know the fiat system forever and a day and this whole crypto thing just scares them i know when i first heard about you know bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and that that's exactly what i was like i thought this is just phony money this is just a scam and it's all rubbish and garbage and it took me months and months and months of my friend telling me about it and me going back and having a look and having a look before i was like all right, this has been around for a few years now and it just continues to go up and the space is growing. And so that's when I thought, you know, maybe I need to have a look into this a little bit more. And that's when I went down the rabbit hole. Well, you know, I, I learned, I won't say as much as I can about Bitcoin, but geez, I learned a lot. I'm sure there's more I could, I could learn. But then, you know, and, and the same thing, like most people started in Bitcoin. I was like, yeah, I'm buying Bitcoin. Then I started exploring into altcoins and then I went into altcoins and, yeah, now there's no turning back. I love cryptocurrencies. I have 100% conviction that this is the future of money. That there's a number of really great projects out there. They're going to be here long term. But also, I think a majority of them, because I think there's like 5,000 coins or something like that uh, on you know CoinGecko and that. I think you'd be lucky if there's maybe 100 or 50 really, really good ones out of that. Well, actually, really, really good ones. We're probably talking maybe 10, 20, or 30. And then outside of that, there'll just be some okay ones that could maybe turn into good ones. But I think, you know, out of the 5,000, you'd be lucky if 100 are legit and will be around, you know, in years to come. But again, that's not financial advice. And I can't tell you, you know, which ones for sure are going to be around. I just think that Bitcoin's proved itself. It's not going anywhere. And I think Ethereum is pretty close to doing that as well anything outside of those two you know and even ethereum we still need to get past this ethereum 2.0 if ethereum 2.0 can roll out and it can you know be put out there to the masses then yep it's it's here to stay but you know we've we've got to wait for that to happen but on bitcoin itself i think it is here to stay i think you know it's had well over a decade to prove that it's here to stay and it has so for me that's my personal opinion not financial advice to you I think Bitcoin is here to stay. I don't think it's going anywhere. Something really drastic would have to happen for that to occur. All the other crypto projects, there's some good ones that I like and I've spoke about them many a time. But geez, I just I don't know if they've got real long-term uh, sustainability. I, I hope they do because I've invested in a lot of them and I don't plan on selling all of them. But yeah, I'll be selling you know probably at least half of pretty much everything other than bitcoin when i think the time's right bitcoin i may sell some but i'll generally be holding on to that and most likely you know using the profits from those other uh, altcoins and that to buy more bitcoin when i think it's the right time as well but all right last story so another south african company reveals plans to list a crypto etf on local stock exchange so i think these are going to be big ones these finally get out Now, fresh reports from South Africa suggest another local company, I'm going to butcher this, but hopefully I say it right, Singia, yeah, I'm sure I butcher that, (laughs) is set to apply to the Johannesburg Stock Exchange to list a new cryptocurrency exchange-traded fund, so an ETF. This application will be the second time they have attempted uh, to list the crypto ETF. A similar application in 2017 was rejected uh, by JSE on grounds that the Burse, I think that's how you say it, or Bourse, was not ready to approve cryptocurrency listings. So it's a matter of time and I like, you know, exchange traded crypto funds as opposed to just like a Bitcoin ETF or just a Ethereum ETF. Don't get me wrong, I think they're going to be great as well. But if you can get like a broader one that really takes in you know, like a DeFi sector or an NFT sector or even just a legit 
you know, a, a bundle of a whole stack of different cryptocurrencies, that's the kind of ETF that I'd want to get involved in. But that's me. I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Would you buy into crypto ETFs? That is my question to you. Me, I am. I'm just waiting for them to kind of happen and I'm not really looking to get into just a Bitcoin or just an Ethereum one. I want a, a, a broader one that takes in a whole stack of different things. That's what I'm looking for. All right, that's it from me. Do me a favor, go down and hit that like button and please subscribe as well. I put out daily uh, content and hopefully uh, if you hit, by you hitting like and subscribing, more of my videos will get seen and I, I really do appreciate when you do that. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. If you're on that gain train at the moment, you're doing pretty well because it's a bit flat at the moment. But anyway, I'll see you next time.